bring, I don't think they could bring Jeremy Stark back, but I think it could be a situation where his brother comes looking for him. If there's like a twin brother out there somewhere yeah. who comes into town looking for him, and then it sort of like spooks Michelle. She sees him, and then it's like, okay, you know what? Like where at first there's that that, that friction of like it's a reminder of what she mm-hmm. did, but then right. he woos her, he charms her, they fall in love, and then boom, you got a new a new it couple. I mean, that's just yeah. my thought process. So when you got that, when you got that call, and I mean, I I, I don't. I know how that is, but I mean, for you, getting that call, it's your last, last date. A, did you expect it? And B, how does that call affect someone as an actor? For, for oh, someone man. Who- you know what? Th- that's a very, 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 very good question. I'm glad you asked that because that, oh, man, that is, that is, that's a very, very good question. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happens is... This is the whole thing about when you're doing a soap is you're there so much you you ultimately become a family. Mm-hmm. And I got to be honest with you, everybody at YNR, the the makeup department, the 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 the, the wardrobe, the, everybody that was there, the stage manager, just welcomed me with open arms, mm-hmm. and I felt it. You know, you know, Peter Bergman. You know, we had this college thing going on because Peter Bergman's son went to Michigan. Yuck. Uh, uh, Susan Walters is a big Georgia fan. Mm-hmm. Yuck. Uh, Josh Morrow My brother. is a big Oklahoma fan. Yep, yeah, Oklahoma. Yuck. And so I would leave things in Josh's room, the Ohio State Buckeyes. I would leave it, you know, around. And he said, don't do that in my room again. <laughs> or, you know. um, so with this time, I was enjoying myself so much. I was loving the character. I was loving everybody, going into work every day to be around these people. Mm -hmm. And when I I got the call, I got to be honest with you, I think it was on a Friday. But I came came in on that Monday. And I I was, I was, um, I was walking around like a little bit of, uh, I was hurt. Uh, I was, I was a bit, stunned actually because i just felt the call would have been different like hey we want to bring you on the show as a permanent Mm -hmm. member you know and then when i got that call so i went to michelle and we started running lines and uh, i talked with her and she kind of helped me get back on the train and just you know hey man whatever shows you got left i don't know how many shows you got left just let's go out and let's do the best job we can and then I just, I never thought about it after that ever again. I just mm-hmm. said, you know what? I'm, I'm, this is show business. business. It's show business. And once you understand that, uh, you know, uh, then, then it's going to be okay. But then, you know, after that day, I shot, I think it was a month. We had to come in and shoot on a Monday, which we never usually do on Mondays. And I felt right after that, I'm like, okay, I've, I've, I got, uh, in uh, as a real terms, was it in New York? I got a call on a Friday where you're you're going to be taken off contract. We're not going to. I cried my eyes out that night, man. That hurt. That hurt mm-hmm. because that was a left field one that I was not expecting at all. Man. Mm-hmm. I just got, you know, I brought my car up and I just got my apartment. And you know, it's just really feeling the groove. Doesn't it always work like, like a doesn't, year. It, doesn't it always work that way for some reason in this business? It's like when you just get shit set up, then yeah. all of a sudden, boom! Like, yeah. it feels like the whole house is being dropped on top of you. And you're like, like you couldn't have just like <laughs> waited a little bit for me to like yeah. get my groove right. in and pay the bill, and then then yeah, drop yeah. the hammer. But yeah, and it's so, business, man. Yeah, and, and um, so from that point forward, I you know I. I uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, somebody, I mean, it, this was like, you know, after I finished Passions, I went, I, I left and my wife and I and my son, we went to Puerto Rico for mm-hmm. a year, only because it's just, you know, we just needed to decompress. And then we came back and that's when the writer strike, the economy <laughs> imploded. And that's when, uh, what's we're striking right now, all of the, the, um, 
streaming platform services were were, were starting. So mm -hmm. no one kind of knew what that you know what was going to happen, and uh, and it and it took me it took me a minute uh, to really kind of find my groove again. Uh, thank God I did a I did a couple of national commercials, um, which which really helped. Uh, Those commercials and, always pay the bills for a while. Man, it would. <laughs> those were God. Those were a godsend, man. Because, you know, uh, going through different agents and and just trying to find mm -hmm. it again, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, you, you know, you, look, you're never going to turn out a contract. At least you should never do it, unless you have. Oh, I watched the Arnold uh, documentary the other day, and I loved it. And the only thing that I can remember him saying is because when he was bodybuilding, he was making money. Joe Weider uh, helped him. Uh, make money. Mm -hmm. So he bought a building. He bought another building. And when it was it was the line that he said, he goes, "I didn't want I didn't want to be maybe an I wanted to be a star." And what happened was uh, he didn't want to go out and do these characterish mm -hmm. roles. He just knew he wanted to be, you know, the Terminator. And he had money to kind of help him uh, go through those those. Uh, those those very thin lean times when you're not making a lot of money. So any young actor out there that I could say, if you're getting in this business, you got to have a side gig. You got to have something that you can make mm -hmm. money um, on that could that that because trust me on this one. I've been doing this for a long time. It's, it's, uh, I think I got my first gig in 1994. Uh, with as a little turn and there's going to be some times where you're going to be going through the sahara desert man and you you got to be able to you got to be able to make it through mm -hmm. uh whatever that is whatever like odd job or or you know the old cliches like bartending whatever whatever you got to do to do it because there's going to be some times then when you do make the money don't do what i did where I had money and uh, the, the the economy. Mm -hmm. I had two houses and you know we, we went through and, it, and we made some bad decisions, whatever. But you know what? It it's it all works itself out. And uh, but those the young actors, I would say, just try to have a a the rainy day money. Well, as I uh, as, as I said, a lot of new actors in town. I'm like, you know what? When you get in the business, like, do you want to be an actor or do you want to be famous? Because a lot of people don't know the difference. It's like, you know, they want to be yeah, famous. They right. look at the cars, the money, the things. And, again, all those things are nice when you attain them. But, again, it's the longevity of, A, can you afford them? Mm -hmm. B, in the sense, number mm -hmm. one, when you just said, when you have that Sahara Desert or rainy day, are those, those things going to pay the bills? Right. Like, you right. having the car and things like that. And, again, it's a business where... It's like this. It's like a roller coaster. It goes up. It goes down. Like right. one minute you're cooking, and then I think even too like when you were saying you know that you you were d disappointed, you know they didn't offer you a contract. But what I've learned just from other friends being on the show over the years is, is that I've always said this is especially with the way YNR has done things over the last several years is that sometimes a contract, especially with that show, is not a good thing. Because you can get right. a contract and then you, like, for example, you write a storyline, then the storyline ends, and then they have nothing to do with you. And then you're right. just like, and now it's like, okay, if you're on a contract with CBS and Sony, it's like, okay, well, now you really can't do other projects because they don't really want you to. They want you to be sort of be available. And, and then you're like, okay, well, i got to pay some bills, but now I can't take this opportunity because I'm on contract. But then mm -hmm. I look at, at the ones that aren't on contract, it almost gives you an opportunity where you can be in a storyline, be hot, let it sizzle out, then come back, write for you again, then come back, then write for you again, because then you're always coming in with something fresh. I mean, I think that like what I always say, and I knew, and I, I knew it was coming for you, even probably before you knew it, because what I've learned with the history over the last 10 years, of y and R is if you are suddenly thrusted into really good script, really good dialogue, really good juicy scenes, mm -hmm. your days are numbered. 
Like your days are pretty right. much numbered because right. it's like literally I've, I've seen it every single act. I'm like, they'll get heat in the beginning with like, this actor sucks. This actor's boring. This actor yeah. has no chemistry. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, he starts getting good material. And, yeah. the, and the audience doesn't understand. It's like, it's not, it's not the actor sometimes. I mean, yeah, so sometimes there's some dud actors, but it's like, it's the material, like what you're given. Like you're doing the best of what you can do with what yeah. you can. So like when you came on the show, did you find you were enjoying the material at first or were you like, oh, this no. is some whack shit? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 I got to be completely honest. It's uh, I loved the idea of, you know, my first initial show was a flashback. It kind of gave the setup of, you know, who this guy is on a, uh, on a really, um, you know, a, 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 a little taste, a little taste. But then I started getting the other mm-hmm. scripts and I really started going, okay, my thought, the way that I would, would like to play this guy is if they're just writing these words that you can just, and some, you know, sometimes on Passions, I mean, we, we, we used to, as a cop on Passions, you know, we really wanted to make things a little, uh, not so much of this, but more of this. Mm-hmm. Get to the point, and, and, you know, and, um, but with the way they, they wrote Jeremy, I just thought that, you know, it was just easy. It was easy to jump in and the way it was written, it was like, okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm really kind of gelling with this and it all kind of just, just plus it's, it, it, we always know too, it's when you, when you're jumping into the, uh, to the, uh, the, 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 the acting uh, stage and you have Peter Bergman, Susan Walters and Michelle. So, I mean, hello, I, I'm with uh, Mount Rushmore. Some, of the, some of the best, uh, um, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. So, and, and, you know, some, look, sometimes I'm doing some lifetime movies mm-hmm. and those can be interesting just as, because, you know, they're, they're not a lot, some of them are not big budget mm-hmm. movies and, you know, you're getting actors that may be uh, based in Oklahoma or Texas or whatever. The only thing I, I can tell you is I learned very a long time ago when I started doing these is the fact that leave your ego at the door, go in and then you like, I like to go in and almost like then be, Hey, maybe I can help the, these guys. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll, if they want any kind of uh, uh you know, Hey, shall we run it? Should we talk about it? You know, whatever. And, uh, and then, you know, that, that, it is is something that that I see myself doing now, is, and I and I think down the road I, I I would love to direct because my wife said that you would be very good at it. Um, but I think it's a, I, I'm always looking for challenges. Mm-hmm. Like uh, when, when I did Monarca, they were like, "Hey, I don't speak fluent Spanish, but you're you're going to have to learn how to speak Spanish because in season two you're going to have to start digging for all this information. You have to start speaking Spanish." So. I, I spoke Spanish in the show. I loved it. I, I did an English accent in uh, La Reine del Sur. And it's just, I love to be challenged. So that's the only thing I'm looking for, stepping forward mm-hmm. and moving on to uh, future projects is I'm just hoping that they can be even more challenging. Uh, so let me ask, let me ask seems, you then, let me, let me ask you then, for you then, like with that, with what you said, what do you, Feel like in, you, in your your experience in your process, what do you feel is more important, the script or the believability in the character? Well, wow, I think both. Um, you know, some because sometimes you you're, you're like say you got a bad script, you got a really yeah, shitty well, script. Well, you then you you. That's where I think that when when you don't get a good script, that's where for me, mm-hmm. I always try to communicate with the director and the writer and go, hey, um, what we look at maybe on the surface, the script's not very good, but maybe we could do some things that uh, 
we could we could make the characters um th but then again you know it's a, it's a very thin line you got to walk down because mm -hmm. you know you don't want to uh, you don't Just want to uh, make anybody upset mm -hmm. but then again you got to realize you know what we have and a good a good streamlines with the director going hey man you know yeah, yeah i get it what can we do to maybe enhance this or could, could we you know is, or do we have liberty to maybe change some dialogue add some dialogue maybe we can do uh imp improvisation mm -hmm. with uh, a couple things i shot a movie in uh, washington uh years ago uh, christopher warren is a good friend of mine and we improv a lot of it uh and i trusted chris him and i we worked to off together he was, he was a friend of mine before we went but i knew him i trusted him and we just we we did a lot of uh, uh improvisation and it really it either because when you're doing it you it's it's because again our budget wasn't very big on the movie mm -hmm. you're gonna hope that it it, it works for the storyline so that again it's like working with the director okay let's figure out okay where because sometimes we're shooting out of sequence mm -hmm. where were we what's our moment before uh, you know charge into this remember who we are we, uh, what, everything so we can if we're at the arc, we got to be able to tell the arc and then and then go into it. But um, that's a good question. I think I think it's a bit of both. I think that you know uh, because the the the, the writing is going to give you who you are, um, but then you got to dig and 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 figure out you know got to dig deeper and deeper and deeper and, and and really find the essence of the character. In your experience in thirty years in the business. Plus, what do you find for yourself the differences for you as an actor between working in daytime, prime time, film, and theater? Well, I, the only thing I, I, I said was, you know, uh, everybody knows or everybody should know back in the day that soaps were a good on the job training. Um, and, if, and, you know, that's where you are there you're learning it's your sponge you know the dialogue that you have uh and the one thing about when, when i started working about film is understanding you know we were doing the wide shot mm -hmm. now we're mm -hmm. doing the mid shot and now we're right fucking here <laughs> and that's i gotta be honest with you the first time that happened to me i really got like wow it's fucking right there, there man you mm -hmm. know um, and as we, as you go further, you just realize that you're, okay, what am I doing? What am I doing? Okay. I'm doing the Netflix show. Okay. It's going to be shot like this. You know, you're going to, you know, why did it do boom? And, uh, when we went down to shoot some, I shot a couple of movies in Oklahoma and, uh, and, uh, you know. I work with Lindsay Hartley, who is on Passion. She's a yeah. great director. I, love I just, I just, I just did another movie with her, with her and Denise, uh, Denise Richards. And Lindsay, um, if you're watching, I want to say my condolences to you. Yes. Passion of your mother. Yeah. Love you. Yeah, I reached out to her uh, a few days ago. Um, just amazing. Yeah. She's, she's so good. She, she was great because we, we, sh because I went down to shoot this movie. It was called Prisoner of Love. Uh, and and then they changed the name, of course, to Trap on My Sugar Daddy. That was a, that was absolutely <laughs> incredible. Somebody texts me and they go, "You have no idea what the movie's been changed to." I go, "Please no." And they go, "Yeah, it's Trap on My Sugar Daddy." I go, "No." <laughs> and so I went down. I had a really good handle on the character. I knew exactly the way I wanted to play it. And and she, we were in the uh, the bar, mm -hmm. and she goes, um, "She was so because she, she's you know because as a director you got to be." You got to think you, you got to be a psychologist with mm -hmm. the actors. You got to be very, you know, whatever. And she comes up to me, she goes, that was really good. That was really good. She goes, but would you try one like this for me? Just do it for me. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh my God, of course. And the couple of times that she gave that direction, she was actually right uh, about the way to play that moment, you know? Uh, but I think, I think all of them are different, you know, a play, you, you really, it's just, it's, you know, uh, I think that the preparation, of course, the preparation that you put in for the plays is mm -hmm. humongous. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you know, even when we did the, uh, 
the young playwrights, we had the director, we'd sit, we'd talk, we would rehearse. Um, and I think those are um, super, super prepared before day, the day that you, you go out and, and, and perform. But, you know, I think that uh, I just, I did Station 19 uh, uh, Great last show. year. Great and uh, so <laughs> I had to play this really uh, lawyer, this really prick lawyer, right? And uh, so I, I come out of the car and I'm, I'm going there up to um oh gosh darn it, i forget the the lead she's from uh she's from new york but she's puerto rican uh and oh, anyway right. so I, I i go up and, and i start talking and i'm i'm doing uh i'm just kind of ad-libbing a little bit you know with the out of the the the, the script so the director comes up and says oh yeah great great by the way yeah the, what you said last time we're going to keep that so you know so i just riffed you mm -hmm. know uh and uh, I added some stuff, and and, and uh, the actress I was working with, man, she she was like, she loved it. So sometimes I think that if you know who you are, mm -hmm. and you go on, and you may, uh, you know, uh, you know, add lip some lines or go a little further than whatever, I think it's all good unless you know you get too carried away. They're gonna bring you back, but. I just I just felt that day was such a great day and and uh, I had such a good time and it turned out really good. Well, you said I mean uh, you, you, something what you want the point you want to make is that you know you you've worked with you said with actors that you click with gelled with, but what happens or what advice would you give or if you've ever have, had an experience of your own for someone that you know you didn't get along with? Mm -hmm. What's your approach to a scene? With someone you don't get along with okay well first of all if the scene is we're having it's an aggro situation oh, <laughs> it's just going to add to it uh I, I was i was what was i doing i was doing something uh uh a while back and uh yeah i truly did oh oh we, we were doing passion scenes and I, I'm, I'm the father and uh there was a guy that was on the show that was mm -hmm. kind of like a drug dealer for my daughter and man, that day, I felt sorry for him, bro, because I had to go in and bust in the door, and I got a little out of control. But uh, I, I would was really not liking this guy, man, you know. And uh, I had to, I had to, I had to calm down, you know, mm -hmm. because I, because I was thinking in my head, it's like if that was my daughter, and this dude is is so disrespect, you know, it, it just amplified mm -hmm. everything for me, you know. Um, but there, there's sometimes here's the here's the hard part is if you are supposed to be romantically inclined with another person and there's absolutely no chemistry whatsoever um, that's that's tough um, and it's it's almost like you know seriously having a discussion like hey are you okay with me or did, did I did I fucking piss you off mm -hmm. or you know what the what the fuck you know what I mean it, 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 or or you know get get your stuff mm -hmm. together you know mm -hmm. you know we 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 gotta you know we, we you just can't it's it's sometimes you you walk down on set like Michelle was instantaneous for me it was like we we I got her and and she got me and it was just instant uh and and I've been blessed with Kim Kim Orich was was just funny smart mm -hmm. still one of the best kissers in daytime uh and dana sparks was 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 great too but um you know sometimes if you're if you're having a scene you've got to find a way um that it's it's like hey if we don't even if we're not jelling look we only have what a month or two here let's just make the best of it and i always would try to find some commonality mm -hmm. with her make her laugh or uh talk about uh, whatever uh if you know do you golf you sports or whatever you cook or you know mm -hmm. just find something that there's a connection and then you once you get in that little connection then you can start you know just slowly you know but how do you uh, find that, that balance now like obviously with the protocols that were in place with covid not having that time before to maybe talk it out a scene and just coming out of your bubble and going straight to doing it have you found yeah. that more 
more challenging now, like as an actor for yourself? To be well, Monarca, we were the first show, Netflix show, to go out full blown after COVID. Okay. So there was a lot of people that would have eyeballs on this show. You know, are they going to be able to do it? Are they going to be able to pull this off? And it was tough because, you know, my wife, uh, you know, we would, but, you know, once we got into the room, that's what I loved about when I was doing Monarca is the fact that the director, you sit and you, we, we talk about the scene, what we're, what we're getting ready to do. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's just really enrich it and talk about it and let's rehearse it. And, you know, you've got time because the budget is, is was a, was a major budget you know so those things you you i love because reality on some of the stuff that you do with soaps you get down with first let's go mm -hmm. and that's why i love about working with peter because peter was like the first